stack will keep you in the know. Get a big go stack will fix your techie woes. Then we'll break and tumble, make these till we're all together raking, and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bilge tank. In the big bilge tank, come and join our fire crew. In the big bilge tank, we will show you what to do. Come we'll hack it till we crack it, and we'll tell the world about it, and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Yeah, is that is that the thing? Is that it? Can you hear us? Now? I think that should be the thing. Right, we'll give it fifteen seconds and then see if we're saying. Yeah. Words, Burke. What's happening? Oh, it means I get to do the opening now. Yeah. Hey, everybody! Welcome to Bilge Tank One Two Seven. We're so down. Where we still can't hear anything. But it's, it's, it takes a while to catch up, right? Yeah, but I'm, that's me bending my head down. Better! <laughs> better? We got sound! Yay! Woo! Result. Yeah. Get in. Okay. Slash. What are we doing today, John? Today, we are going to look at some stuff that Sandy's been working on on Pycade. We're going to walk you through the new graphics hat or GFX hat, and we're going to take a look at Breakout Garden. Let's roll. Cool. Yeah. Like you say, it's the old school gang. Oh, yeah, I forgot that bit. <laughs> it's, it's the, the first time gang. I think the four of us have done a bilge tank since about episode. Hundred at least. It's been months, so yeah, it's good to be back together. Yeah, yeah. Everyone agrees we have sound. Yay. So Pycade. Yes, Pycade. Where are we at, Sandy? What's new? What's up? Um, so if you pre-ordered Pycade, um, you should be getting your Pycade today. They've all shipped. Uh, they've all shipped. Assuming um, you're in the UK, it'll yeah. arrive today, and if you're about a EU. week ahead of what we promised, I think. I believe so. Yeah. Trade winds have been kind. Um, there's also a small amount left on the shop. Um, and we should have more than about a week to uh, ten one, days. Yeah, once to two one weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, Tanglewood um, is now available and it's really good and you should get it. Um, it's a new Mega Drive game made by Matt Phillips, who I think is based in Sheffield as well, I believe. Um, and it was a Kickstarter and it's just um, become available on Steam. Um, if you buy the game on Steam you get the ROM as well. It's um, basically just in the game files, you open up the game files, there's yeah. a ROM. There's yeah. to go. But they're also doing physical cartridges, aren't they? For the yeah, C64, yeah, okay. very, very cool. Yeah. Um, I think they just showed off their retail packaging um, this week, in fact. So, yep. Yeah, very cool project. Uh, and the finished game is awesome. Like yeah, you, you've got to play it. It's super smooth, super yeah. slick. One of our resellers in Germany is actually now offering services for doing uh, physical cartridges, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. That Ooh, is pretty which cool. Which one? Uh, you, Dragon Box, Michael mm -hmm. Rosek, <coughs> who oh. does Pandora, or cool. the Pyra now. We, sh we shall speak no more of Pandora. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's yeah, it's a really good game, um, and it's a good way to get kind of legal ROM when you're when yeah, you're a yeah. Um, and a good quality one at that. Yep. Um, the Pycade live builds, real time builds tutorial video thingy um, is live now as well. Um, 
and there's also a kind of a Don't forget the keyboard <laughs> Yeah, the keyboard's active. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new to this, you changed everything. Hello and welcome to Bill Stank 127. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. oh, I was literally just changing um, it and you sniped it off me. Yeah, so there's a, an online tutorial that's basically the text <coughs> from the, the instruction sheet with kind of some amendments um, and the different sections of the video kind of interspersed as well. Um, so that's kind of the definitive uh, Oh, did you tutorial to follow sections as well. Yep. So yeah, it's been split yeah. out. So there's a playlist with all of the, the various bits, plus there's the complete build as well. It's a heck of a long video, isn't it? It's yeah, it's an hour. Well, it's an hour and forty minutes, which is a video one. You can sit down. Is about how long it takes to build a pikeade, right? Yeah. And probably then, probably a bit less that. because Matt that did the video had done it a few times before yeah. she knew what he was doing. Um, it's kind yeah. of like a build along with Matt. It's so really nice though. Really nice videos. Yep. And it takes you through all the steps. To be honest, you should be able to follow the text instructions, but the videos are there to kind of help you out if you get yeah. a little bit stuck, you're not yeah, quite sure on how to progress. more of a visual learner and cannot physically read instructions like me. <laughs> instructions? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's, a lot, there's a lot of people that will probably open the box and chuck the instructions away and think, ah, I can do this myself. <laughs> Not um, realising it's a delightful place. Slightly harder than a bit of IKEA furniture to kind of um, <laughs> freestyle your way through. So. It's probably, be make probably best to read though. the instructions. Yeah. Sometime we should give uh, a set of parts to somebody with no instructions. Just send out random ones without any instruction sheets in. And I'd rather, I, I think, get them to do it here. <laughs> Pike it's quite hard to watch the process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, so that's that's Pike Aid. I think, I think that's everything. Very nice. Shall we yunk the power and move yeah. it? Don't yunk the power, it's got an off button. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Soft power up. Yeah, I'll focus. Sweet. We're on. Cool. So, um, first, well, secondly, we're going to have a quick close, look at GFX hat, which we've just launched. Hello world. Ooh. Hello world. The least inspiring demo. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's got a gradient. <laughs> Has, it's got a gradient. You can configure yourself. Um, and this is kind of a follow-on to the Displaytron hat which used a 16 by 3 character display, whereas this is a 1 to 8 by 64 pixel display. It is, it's a nice display. You can do stuff like 4-bit uh, temporal dithered colour, no, 2-bit temporal dithered colour on it, which is effectively four shades of grey, but it's really, really tricky to do. Mm. It doesn't really gel well with Python, unfortunately. Yeah, it looks pretty convincing, though. Yeah, we it's... should probably mention the flicker that was on the video there was, um, that's just the camera. It's, um, yeah, it's the refresh of yeah. the LCD being The refresh being rate on the this. display is somewhere about 60, 70 plus hertz, depending on how warm it is, mm -hmm. and other things like that. Cool. Have you got any what cool you, demos for this? I, I have the mini pinout demo that I was working on last night, which mm -hmm. is like a, I thought it's such a nice little display. It's got enough resolution to do kind of old school UX kind of stuff. And we've had examples of this kind of UX before, but I didn't have time to do anything super shiny, so I, I did a mini version of Pinout by XYZ mm -hmm. using the data bar from Pinout to display the GPO header on the Pi and let you page through it. Hopefully, if you give me the Pi terminal, I should be able to get it up and running. <laughs> give me that. Can you do that? You, you can do we it. We can't <laughs> see. Don't have to bring it out of sleep. It's just sleeping. Asleep. Asleep. There you yeah, go. There, there we go. go. Uh, which way around do I want to be? Oh, you need bigger than that, will you? Ah, stop. We should not pull it now. We need we'll a we'll public device with everything. If your local changes will be overridden. Please stash them before you wired. Oh, that's Sandy oh, setting yeah, up for this. Yeah. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. No! Well, he does! He's a bad man! This is how I learn. <laughs> In fact, Phil, just, just delete that directory and pull it down again. Well, whatever. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, just delete the directory. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, if you had the balloons while you're typing that. Because this could be some time. Uh, we had the balloons, which uh, are actually going towards <laughs> Brian Cortiel's Mega Pi Noon at EMF Camp. So if you're going to be at EMF Camp in about a week... Get it together, Phil. 
the flip side. I have to squint across at the TV. So yeah, come do Mega Pie Noon with a big arena and bigger, more nasty robots and Pomeroni balloons on top. Pirates versus robots. Always. Since the robots won last time and killed the ninjas. That was the badge thing. Okay, you can you can watch the text happening. I'll just I'll just read <laughs> the internet. Right. Yeah, sell some pie yammel. And I think also at EMF camp, since it was so popular two years ago, there will be a Hebocon that we're going to chuck a load of parts at. Mm. So we're, we're kind of supporting the robot track, I think. Drum but there will also be things. power wheels and all sorts going on. No! Oh. Ooh, this is a slightly... Thingy version of the library, isn't it? <sighs> <laughs> How late last night were you developing this film? <laughs> it hasn't been uh, too late yet. Yeah. Phil is just in time delivery of libraries. Because <laughs> it's the only it's way the examples works. to this. This is quite a tricky one for examples because it's such a nice display. It feels like anything that doesn't properly show off the display is, is just not kind of up to the cut, if you know what I Not mean. good enough. <clears throat> yep. You've Yay. been out. Oh, oh that's hey. cool. Nice. Look at that. Do you nice. want to think so? This is the Raspberry Pi's GPO header. All the black dots are ground pins to give you some kind of awareness of what's going on. My fingers mess with the focus there. The square one is pin one. So basically you rotate this up this way and this header... Well, it's actually in, in the position it's, it's in on the pie, right? Yeah, it's in exactly the same position it's on the pie. So as you page through, you'll get a <laughs> backlight colour change to reflect the pin type, which is a little bit jarring, but kind of interesting. And you'll get details oh, cool. about the pins. So you can see that it is physical pin number three, BCM pin number two, wiring pipe pin number eight. And you can scroll down and see it's got an alt-o function of the... SDA on I squared C1 bus, which is a data line, um, and then SMI SA3. I'm not actually sure what the SMI <coughs> bus is. Uh, and then it's got display parallel interface VSync. Is well. SMI one wire? One wire? Is it one wire? I don't know. I think you can put one wire on any pin on the Pi, can't you? Okay. You should uh, demo that you can edge touch the, the buttons down the side as well. Edge touch. Yeah. 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 That's what he's doing. So the interface we've got here, without holding it still. We've got this display. You've got two up and down scroll keys next to the display, and then at the bottom, kind of an enter back key. So this is like back here. This yeah. is the enter key. And then and at the bottom, plus minus yeah, an enter. Right you can down. remap these like the display tron so to got, whatever. Yeah, you can make them do anything you like, but we've tried to give it like Suggest. a decent default yeah. or a menu system or something like that. Now, that's really cool, Phil. Splatron, I haven't written a, a spaghetti <coughs> menu API for this. Although that doesn't preclude the possibility. Because it would be interesting. Hey, if you get the chance to write a spaghetti menu interface, then you'll take it, right? <laughs> <laughs> spaghetti menus are the best kind of menus. But it's just like great that. for little status <coughs> displays and things like this. You can imagine it displaying maybe a little graph in the bottom half, graphing your CPU temperature and the clock and all sorts of other stuff. Like it's a lot of resolution, and it's uh, a lot more flexible than your kind of standard 16-character, three-line or two-line displays. Yeah. Because you can kind of get really fancy with graphics and graphs, whereas with those character displays, you've only got eight <coughs> slots where you can program custom characters, and you only really get eight kind of building blocks for drawing things, which is not... And you can use, you can use real fonts on it as well, which is And nice. real fonts, yeah, which mm -hmm. is pretty nice. These fonts here are some pixel-based fonts. They're actually real font files your system can use. Uh, and then there's a couple of other fonts baked in that were brought over from Inkyfat, if I remember correctly. <laughs> but it's, it's nice to just be able to draw text without having to worry about getting a, a bitmap table of fonts or having a big font dump or any other kind of Normally, when you use a character display, you're restricted to the fonts that are built into it. So, with uh, usually only one, right? 
There's only usually one font. Yeah, you basically the the font. <laughs> so display Android, you have what's well, a two five five jars. Eight of them are custom, and the rest of them are just mapped physically in hardware to a table of fonts or to a table of characters that doesn't really necessarily line up to any character map you'd normally encounter in the real world. So it it does interesting things with some languages. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't give you much flexibility for that. Whereas this, because you're using built-in system fonts, you can go and find a font that supports whatever language you like, start writing text in that language, no problem. Very cool. Which is super nice. Okay, good. Can cool. you make it do rainbows? <coughs> do you have a colourful demo? Do you like? Can you show the six different... Colourful zones? demo? Mm. So Should we get the uh, backlight doing a thing? Yeah. Sure. Let's see if I can blind type it. Hold on. <laughs> Would you like a terminal back M. Effect hat dot backlight. Ah, I did it. Blind type. <laughs> oh, there nice. you go. <laughs> so, yeah, just so like that just is the built in test cycle with the backlight. So, if you run the backlight module as a program using Python mm -hmm. space dash m and then uh, graphics hat dot backlight, it will run the built in test cycle for that particular yep. module, which just happens to be the rainbowing. And each button has a white LED that shines through from the bottom. Which is sweet. Yeah, we've, yeah. we've put under it LEDs on everything since, uh, what was it, Drum Hat that the idea was coined? Yeah, yeah, I think Drum Hat yeah. was the first one. Because they worked so well. So it was this an Asus or an Acer motherboard where we <laughs> saw the idea. So this thing kind of showed, this shines a lot better than Displayatron Hat used to because you did some special this with the manufacturer, didn't you? Do -do -do. John, process. Oh, do you mean the backlight? Are we talking <laughs> diffusers? The, the diffuser, <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, with Displaytron hat, we were using a super slim... In fact, we've got them. We sell the module. Let's get them. Yeah. Shining through the bias. We had to build it. our own diffuser, Perspex, and fit it manually with that. We did. So it's quite labour intensive. So this one's actually custom plastic, so you can see the... Um, you can see the display there um, has got a kind of plastic like casing basically um, and if we do that then you can oh, oh. thanks John <laughs> sorry there you go um, it out yeah the so you can see that you can see the display sits on this kind of plastic assembly um, so the panel is a standard panel but we've had we've had the diffuser and back customized so that we can mount our own RGB LEDs and yeah uh, light the diffuser from the side basically. So then there's a, there's a channel there and that lines up with the, the LEDs that are on the, on the PCB and they shine up um, and then kind of I guess re reflect on this white um, kind of like diffuser. The, they have like layers of coating don't they and yeah, things yeah. like that to help bounce the white, uh, the light around. Yep. yep. Um, but it does work really nicely. And the bonus is you get this um, neon halo effect around the edges <laughs> where the plastic of the which device. is great for notification style things. If you're pulsing <coughs> on TV a colour, then you get that kind of frame. It catches the eye. It does. It just looks cool. Oh, we like it a lot. Cool. Yep. And that's why it's 20 quid. It is. Because we don't have to do that manual soldering anymore, do we? Yeah, it's actually cheaper than the Displayatron hat, which is much more awkward to assemble for us, but we're looking at ways to try and improve that. It doesn't right have now. a bar graph, though. It does not have a bar graph. a bar graph. Because with Displayatron hat, we actually used these LEDs that are now undermounted next to the buttons and turned them into a bar graph. But now you've got a graphical LCD fill. Yeah, you can have as many bar LCD. graphs you as you want. You can have as many bars as you like. And there it lies cool. The we like that. Graphics hat. It's awesome. Nico's been working on that one for quite a while. It's taken quite a long time because of the custom work on the LCD. I think the first I knew of it was when it turned up on my desk. And I'm like, what's this? <laughs> what is this thing? I don't even know what we're doing anymore. This is great. Um, so yeah, check it out on the store. It's got uh, all the details. Sandy's written a nice description, and it'll tell you everything about the various uh, chips that are driving the LEDs, the driver for the LCD, so that you can go and find uh, the data sheets or whatever if you want to write your own code for them. I hope you'll get the uh, really cool. uh, for uh, the two-bit temporal <coughs> dither driver released as something people can play with as well, because that's quite fun. Even though it's not perfect, it's still quite fun. It works in specific use cases. Yeah. And it works really nicely for those. And there are just some things it can't really do. <laughs> but we can talk about that more when the time comes, can't we? we kind can. of explain how that works. Cool. Temporal dithering sounds I don't know, Sandy, if this is going to output audio. 
It's probably not, but we can show it in a minute. Oh, we can tell them there. Right? It's pretty fun. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. I think if we enable audio, it can uh, it can do audio, right? Okay. So Sandy and I shot a little promo video for <laughs> for Breakout Garden, which we launched last week. We did this whole thing in like half a day, didn't we? Including the code. And there's no one yeah. to speak on. Yeah. I don't think there's any sound coming from it, but never mind. Yeah, you get the idea. It's on the it's on the product page. You can go and check it out. That's what I mean by graphical interfaces and things. So we yeah we kind of decided we wanted like a little promo video for this one, and we came up with three projects for it. We wrote some really quick code, like these these code examples were fifteen minute jobs. They were not uh, not things we spent a huge amount of time on, and that's basically because Phil's libraries are awesome. So, you know, he'd, he'd written really good quality libraries for everything. Yep. Why, wow. why is it not changing? Blast from the black past, because focus maybe? Focus! <laughs> um, yeah, Phil had written some really great libraries to drive everything, so it was super quick to kind of get these projects together, um, set them up for filming, quickly do a take, and then Sandy edited it. You edited it the same day as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was all yeah. done in one yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, Less than the day, it was like, yeah, just <laughs> for like half a day, I think, and then, yeah. all the filming. And... Yeah. One of our most popular video. YouTube videos ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it my imagination or in that video when it transitions from the video to the still where the plants come over the front of it, mm. does the resolution change of the video behind it? No, nothing no, like that would happen at all. Film. Film. <laughs> no, I swear it changes. No idea what you're talking about. So, uh, yeah, if you didn't get a chance to see that, like, see us announce Breakout Garden last week, we'll take you through it quickly now and we'll have a look. At, um, basically, yeah. the idea is that it's... Uh, it's a kind of a, modu a modular electronic system without being <laughs> locked into a modular electronic system. So yeah. it's a set of perfectly standard breakouts, um, but we've done something with the uh, style of the connectors that mean that they mate nicely with what are effectively card edge connectors, the kind of connectors you use on a PCI card in your computer, uh, often used in industry because they're super robust uh, and very, very easy to work with, really. Yeah, it's a standard that's not a standard kind of thing. Well, so, well, yes. What is there out there? There's kind of little bits, Stemmer, Grove, Grove Sam Labs have got them, we've got Flotilla, Flotilla. Um, Quick. If you quick, um, yeah, uh, Seed have got a couple of them. Uh, Seed have got Grove, standard. but they've also got the Which SBC is, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's just the ones we can think of right now. And it's kind of like, yeah, they all need a JST or this. Or, they or don't a custom have, connector or yeah. something. Basically, I think every single hobbyist electronics manufacturer at some point makes a modular electronic system because yeah. it's so tempting it, it always comes up. seems like a great idea and you spend a lot of time thinking about it and put a lot of energy into it and it always uh, i don't know it just seems like naturally it's one of those challenges people relish it's the stuff but, around it isn't it mm. it's having good software support having good tutorials and things it, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of people oh to support that I think this is particularly great because one of the things we get on the support forums is someone coming along and going, this doesn't work, I'm getting an I squared C error. And we go, oh, have you checked your soldering? And they go, soldering? I haven't soldered it yet. I thought I could hold the wires in while I was testing it to make sure it worked. Soldering what soldering? And this basically lets people who aren't used to using breakouts just plug them in, know they're getting a secure connection, and kind of start testing the software, building the software, and working with them without having to solder. And then once they've got something that they know works and they know their software works, they can then solder all the breakouts together into the project. And then if anything at that point goes wrong, they know it's their wiring and not the software. So, imagine, uh, yeah, it's a nice they do for that so this started with the BME 680 by accident. Well, not entirely. Well, yes. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. We kind of noticed we've been waiting two years for the BME 680 to be released. And we noticed that kind of the first five pins of the party <coughs> on that second row are the I squared C and a spare pin if you need it for an interrupt. So we made it so the BME 680 would plug straight on there with a header. And then Nico went away like he does and comes back a couple of weeks later saying, look at this. And it's kind of like, well, Nico, you've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> And then we revised the BME 680 to be a little bit slimmer and mm -hmm. better for this. And then started the proliferation of boards and the standard that's not a standard. And then when we had enough things to support it, we released Breakout Garden. Yeah. But now we're going to continue populating the range based yeah, we, on what people want, really. We've got plans for 
something like 30 breakouts to go with this. But the point yeah. is they are just normal breakouts. So you yep. can use them the way you would use any breakout, solder them on uh, to pin headers, you can solder wires directly to them, whatever. Yep. But if you don't want to solder them or you just want to experiment with a few ideas, <coughs> then breakout garden is a great way to do that. Yep. And actually it's worth mentioning. Um, can we go to the close up? Um, if you've bought any breakouts already and you've soldered a female header on them, um, there's pins along the top and you get a bit of um, one times 20 male header included with the hat. Um, so if you've, if you've got one with a header on already, then you can actually just pop it on those pins there. Onto pin yeah. header. If you've added a male header, you can still just stuff it into the socket. Al almost <laughs> certainly. Yeah. Yeah, so that's quite handy. So we got some good press from Alistair Allen, which was very mm. welcome. Yeah. He was kind of saying, so bored of breakouts now, and this <laughs> one's okay. But it was so bored of breakout systems. Yeah, that was the whole yeah. point. Modular, Modular electronic, electronic systems. systems or whatever. And Adafruit and Spark Fun have been doing breakouts for years, so we didn't want to do it unless we had a reason. And this was our reason. This was our calling. We're still finding breakouts. new and interesting parts to do breakouts for, though, which is... Yeah, kind of there are. The thermal cameras are awesome, aren't they? Not, they're not cheap, but they're very, very cool. very cutting edge of writing libraries for this stuff, and it's like, there is nobody who is an authoritative source on this. No. I'm just going to have to ask myself. You are now. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, now it's all your problem, isn't it, Phil? We'll do some demos, show some of the demos. Yeah, we should be able to run some demos. Let's do that. Well, stuff like the BME 680, we've become the go-to source for the Python library because we're the only one shipping. I think we're linked off the Bosch website, website now. Yeah, now, and we? linked <laughs> off the Bosch <laughs> website. So we can get the tablet up so Phil can run one of the yeah, tablet the the uh, the Not the tablet, the device camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah device, yeah. Wake it up. Yeah. Right. Show us how easy it is. Oh, you've already installed it. I'll run the installer anyway, because it's pretty. Do the size, so the, size the, graph one. The other side to oh, yeah. this is that the we have a, an installer that will detect what's plugged into your breakout garden and basically go away and yeah, look for which breakouts install. you need to install the software for, and then it will go and actually pull the software down and do the installation. Yeah. So you can plug in, say, four modules, type install, and it will set everything up for you ready to go. So we're about where Windows was in 2004 now. Yeah. <laughs> Give or take. Yeah. What what example do you want me to run? No, what do you want? You want to? Oh, you run on it. What, um, you've got the three hundred three D. Seismograph. Seismograph. Yeah. Uh, S I S E I. S E I. C. Yeah, you'll need. Oh yeah. That's, you have to go into the directory. Oh, yeah. the directory. There we go. Bling. Cool. Oh. Okay. Oh okay. Hang on, I think you might have... Oh, it's because it's tilted. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, should, it should zero out, I think. Um, for front. It does, yeah. Yeah, not like that, though, I don't okay. think. Kill it and run it again, just so that we can... Yeah, just... I've got a feeling it's only looking at on. one axis of the accelerometer. But I'm not 100% certain. <laughs> oh, there we go. Do you want me to turn it on? Yeah, please, yeah. Oh, do, you want, do you want the terminal so you can read it? Kill it. Oh, right. control. You didn't kill it. You didn't kill it, you didn't kill it enough, Sandy. There we go, that's better. Kill. That's kind of cool. Oh, it looks fantastic. Uh, earthquake. <laughs> so you did this with the Luma library in the end? I, yeah, this is, well, using Pill. Pill to do it, which is just the Python Pill. imaging library. So that, that's what it was drawing all the graphics, then passing it into your uh, library for the actual display itself. Oh, but it was dead easy, really. It wasn't, there was nothing particularly difficult to deal with. There we go. Yay, sweet. Right, so this is the Dino Detect version 1.2 <laughs> beta. Not, not ready for release yet. Yeah. You were reading articles on how they did it in Jurassic Park to try and work <laughs> out how they did it because it was hard to get the water to yeah specifically filming filming the water to yeah, get yeah. that kind of boom. so I believe when they when they did it in Jurassic Park they had the you must have seen it and um, seen them where they're in the car and there's the the cup of water on the dashboard the plastic cup with water in it and then you see the the kind of water in the cup like rippling mm -hmm. yep. with every footstep yes yeah, so the dinosaur stomps along um, and apparently the way they did it was they had underneath the dashboard they had a thing like a basically a guitar string 
um, right under the, the middle of the cup and they kind of pulled it down and then twanged it up <laughs> so it hit directly in the middle of the cup and made a, a perfect ripple from the centre of it. Oh, amazing. Um, I believe that's how did you replicate did that? Well, we didn't, we just used we just hit the, the table with a mallet, <laughs> a rubber mallet on the table. Just so, so we were the, the, the actual the measurement was the same force that was causing the ripple in the water, ah, cool. and you actually see the whole cup jump sideways, almost goes out of frame. <laughs> there you go. That's uh, cool. Run the um, distance one as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I've just swapped. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> just like that. Way ahead of me. I can't remember what the other one was. Oh, it was BME, wasn't it? Yep. I don't know if that's going to work. I don't know if we have a Wi Fi connection, but we can um, give it close okay. up. Okay, can sort that out. Close up? No, close up. That's close up. Ooh. There we go. So, this, this is the, some distance the VL53L1X is a really cool sensor. It can sense from four centimeters to 400 centimeters. So, four centimeters to four meters, which makes it awesome for Amazing. any sort of range sensing. And it's so accurate and so kind of stable. Um, like traditionally distance sensing was done with IR LEDs and the reflection off the surface, but they were super... Um, ultrasonics as well. And, and ultrasonics, of course. Both had the same problem. Um, well, you used the IR LEDs at short range and the ultrasonics at <coughs> longer range, didn't okay. you? G generally, but they had all sorts of issues with the angle of the surface. They were detecting the reflectivity of the surface, other environmental stuff. This actually uses a laser internally yep. to... Um, determine the distance. So it's effectively like those laser range finders you use for measuring rooms, you know, estate agents use them to measure rooms. I believe rooms. it's a class one infrared laser. <coughs> something something yeah. like something It's a that. very low power invisible laser, basically. Good to stick on the back of your car already. Oh, so, I moved my end. Hello. <laughs> um, it's amazing it's topping out where pointy. the wall is. Uh, it might even be the camera. The field of view is about, 20, is it 17 and 27 degrees? 27 degrees, 27. but it's configurable to be narrower. Okay. Yeah. So basically there's like a, there's a grid effectively um, that it senses um, and you can kind of configure it to, to only use kind of like the center of that grid. Mm -hmm. And, and, so and even narrow, the left hand side. Yeah, and the right or one side, side yeah. or the other. Yeah. yeah, we need to play with that a bit more and yeah. see. Oh, look at that. see the IR. You can see the IR. Yeah. Wow. Cool. There is no laser. laser. <laughs> Sweet, scary. You actually got it below four centimeters there as well, didn't you? You can get below, yeah. but I think that's their it's official long. spec is yeah. kind of yeah. four to four hundred. You can actually run the sensor in three modes. It's got like a short range, medium range, long range. So if you only want to measure up to about a meter, I think you use short range and you get slightly better. Uh, resolution. resolution for that particular yeah. range or whatever. But the real <coughs> hero here is the OLED. The OLED is so so awesome. Uh, yeah, it's so rare that you find perfectly square displays, as in you know, a one to one aspect ratio. And I think this is just a great example of that. He's doing it blind. It's weird. Actually, the only contribution I had to make to the library to get that OLED supported was just one two eight by one two eight to add the the shape, and away it went. Oh, it. Yay. And this is the weather station example using the original breakout that we made, the VME 680. So this is using, this is actually completely fake data. Just for no, it's not. Oh, is it live now? Yeah, it's real. Uh, for the video, it was fake data. But I spent all the last weekend re now. redoing your example, John. <laughs> yeah, all right, I had 15 minutes. <laughs> so you can see here, you've seen the barometric pressure, seeing the current time, the min-max temperatures, <clears throat> and yeah. the current temperature. So if I believe if I touch that, then... Ooh. Do, 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 do. These, are, these are good examples. Up. These are the kind of things that want for graphics out, damn it. <laughs> are you pulling down the weather icon from a uh, weather API then? Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. So it has, like, <laughs> it has cloudy, rainy, sunny That's kind of icons. Crazy. Do you have uh, Reynolds? And do we have a thermal camera to check that? <laughs> there was a discussion on Twitter today about using thermal cameras in doctor surgeries or doctors using them to kind of see um, circulation issues. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we know that. makes sense. Yeah, yeah I think noticed you... that where I put my hand in front of the thermal camera and I was basically oh. invisible to... It's like blue, yeah. wasn't it? I could just hide behind my hand if I were to have a pressure. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, yeah. I pulled the sensor Trump. out. Oh. You'll need to run it again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's me putting my hand next to you with my big fiery meat hooks. <laughs> it's invisible. Yeah, John's pretty hot. <laughs> well, a busy wise. day. His extremities are also warm. Yeah. Thirty-four. Boosting <laughs> with thirty-four. Extremities there. Doop. 
Cool. Yeah, so it keeps track of the max and min as well. Yeah, like so it's daily. ranging it. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty cool. It should reset every 24 hours. Uh, uh, we should make that hours. logged somewhere as well, right? So that people can optionally give it like a log should, file yeah, and then yeah, get the yeah, data samples yeah. out. So, yeah. Very, very cool. I guess if we just spit out a standard output, then they can just pipe, uh, pipe it, it in to somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. that would work. So these, um, I don't, do we have any other breakout examples installed on there? Or is that the only ones we've got on the That's retail the at the moment? That's the only that we have so okay. far. Okay, so we'll have to add some more. But there are some basic individual examples for the, the various breakouts, which just show you the data output and don't do anything especially interesting. Okay. Although the uh, proximity sensor does do a little ASCII bar graph on terminal. In terminal. In terminal. Lovely. <laughs> but we'll do the thermal camera with uh, the OLED. That'll be quite nice. Definitely. Um, and those, I mean, the breakouts range, they're generally kind of like 10 to 20 pounds, depending on the functionality. Well, uh, apart from the thermal parts camera, parts. which is... Apart from the thermal camera, pricey. which is a very expensive part, but very, very cool. Um, yeah, but yeah, check it out on the website. To get working, but yeah. Expensive for chips, but not expensive for thermal cameras. No. It has a cool shiny, shiny lens. Where is it? Oh, it looked cooler in person. It's, kind of, it's reflective. Yeah. It's very it's reflective. Kind of silvery. Yeah. Awesome. So watch out for more Breakout Garden examples coming and soon. Share your examples when you make them with Breakout Garden. Yes, yep. definitely. Show people what you've done with it. In fact, we should do like a little, uh, a little example of how a, uh, like a single script project could be, and then see if people competition come up time. with ideas. Well, yeah, competition maybe, or just come up with ideas like if they want to have their own project added into the repo. We mm. could look at doing that. Yep. yep. Kind of as long as they follow a certain formula, and it's it's within size constraints or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you, nice yeah, if you want to fork the repo and then um, submit, submit your own request. example then by pull request, then that would be good. Cool. Yep. Right. I think all of the examples we've got are only using like one breakout plus the OLED. At the so moment, it'd be nice yeah. to kind of make some that use kind of like three or four different breakouts. That'd be quite nice. Mm -hmm. I've got one project that I want to make, which is flashing the OLED screen and using a light sensor on the other side between two pies to make like a wireless communications link uh, at a really low bit rate. In fact, it's going to suck. It's going to really suck, but I'm going to make it anyway. So. Yeah. Well, we've got the um, new light sensor coming out as well, haven't we? So we've got four channel. This one or the other one? The <coughs> other one, six channel. Is that the spectrometer on it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah that's very spectrometer. Cool. So between that, you, I think you get 10 different yeah, channels in there. there. Uh, spectroscopy. Yeah. Spectroscopy. Well, Store spec Paul yeah. spoiled it already, so we may as well just show it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Spoilers. We're trying to spoil ourselves more on the. There's already a Python and... library published for this and a GitHub repository <laughs> for it, so. Fuck it. It's a huge secret. So, this is basically a six channel spectrometer, um, yeah. which will give you information about six different wavelengths of light. Yeah, someone else had done a cool, cool uh, example of this where they had the spectrometer just displaying bar graphs on Unicorn Hat HD. Yeah. And that was with another breakout with the same chip on it. Oh, right, okay. Standard. You have to send us a link to that. I've not seen that one. The, um, the cool thing about this is you can do things like analyse light sources. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, take a light bulb and shine it at yeah. the sensor and then kind of work out the... Well, you could display a histogram on your OLED, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you could kind of see the yeah. colour temperature and the yeah. shape of the... You know, uh, just how little light, how little of the light spectrum your photo lights are filling out, why your photos look weird. Very cool. Cool. I think that's us. Yeah. That's definitely Indeed. us. Right. Thank you for tuning in. Sorry for the break last week, but if you watched <laughs> the Breakout Garden video, it was worth it as and, a replacement. And, and the technical issues at the start of this one. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll keep working on that. What issues? What issues? <laughs> no, no, no issues. No. Yes. Um, Welcome to Mind Tank. Don't forget to like, comment, nice. who's going to do and it? Subscribe. Subscribe. No, okay. We don't, we don't do anymore. <laughs> hit the that. bell yeah. and then hit the extra bell and then. I think apparently you say smash that subscribe smash, button. Smash it. Yeah, smash it. Ring smash that bell. That subscribe button. And yeah. we'll see you next week. Oh, play it cool. Who's got more contributory? as time goes on, he's saying they're going to do a PKE meter, which would be super oh, cool. Be amazing, yeah, yeah, very nice. PKE yeah. meter, tricorder, and the thing from yeah. Aliens. With the waggly oh. bits on it as well. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't the thing from Aliens work with um, micro, micro changes in air density? Yes. Which was the, the bunkum excuse that he made to pass off the fact that they did. We've never encountered aliens before. We don't have a tracker <laughs> just sitting around to track them. Maybe. See, a, see, a proper geek would make a tricorder with it. Yep, yep. tricorder, yep. aliens thing, PKE meter. Yep. They're the big three sci-fi ones, I think. 
the, the aliens one was best because it just kind of went. Voodoo, voodoo, voodoo. <laughs> we need, a little, we the need a little sounder. Speaker. We do need a sounder. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's it. We're off. Bye. Bye.